you guys, I'm going off by then. And then mm. he, he threw himself into like, right, I'm going to play music, I'm going to womanize, I'm going to drink, I'm going to whore around, and I'm just going to be like, yeah, mm. devil made me do or it. Or do you speak hands? Yeah. See, it was that thing, I think, kind of like a supernatural ability aside, it was kind of like, you see it a lot of kind of like guitar players or bass players that are really good have hands like fucking shovels. Yeah. Big, yeah. huge fingers and they can reach up and down the fretboard and he it's had this real unusual that, yeah. style of playing mm. as well where he could almost play sort of bass and melody as well at the same point so he could do the whole sort of moving up and down and it was well, an was unusual style he, he was freakish like was yeah. it was it the famous quote about him was Keith Richards saying oh first time I heard my talk was two guitar players playing and not just one yeah. and I was like yeah but Keith you're probably smacked out of your fucking head you're probably, the probably <laughs> seeing fucking purple monkeys like yeah. and I was like oh it's two guitars <laughs> <laughs> Pete, it's a fucking brick. <laughs> <laughs> right after they recorded that uh, little snippet where he says that he sees a Chandler key and he's like, oh shit, look, that guy's playing three guitars. Keith, that, that's a Chandler with a mop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe I need some, you know, um, Narcol or something like that. But of course, I suppose we won't get too caught up in that, Robert Johnson, because there's. Actually, there was only a few other people that kind of like, you know, going back on it it was like uh, Giuseppe Tartini. Yeah, Giuseppe. Yeah, yeah, he's such a happy violinist. (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, See, the Simpsons Simpsons take everything they touch. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit mad, though, that there's, there are quite a few people in this like 27 club, isn't there? Oh yeah, that that'll be another thing that we'll mm. do at some stage because uh, mm. there is there's like loads of documentaries and stuff about like conspiracy theories around it. Someone else actually on the list that sold or sold that died twenty seven Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jimi Hendrix himself felt that not that he sold he sold to the devil that but that he was possessed mm. by um, devils that used to make him play music. But it was the same with this Giuseppe Tartini guy who was one of the first recorded people to sell their soul to the devil. He was a violinist and um, he had a dream that the devil was playing the violin and uh, he ended up writing the devil's trill sonata. Um, that it's so complicated, most people struggle to play it. But his whole thing, even when it was that, he thought that he could never play what he heard when he saw the devil playing. Um, and then as well, because there seems to be this thing about the devil... So what you're saying is it was just a tribute. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) it's just a tribute. Yeah, that's probably where it came from. (laughs) Um, But then it was Niccolo Paganini. Paganini? Paganini. Yeah, um, who seems to be one of the guys that, like, even when people think of the devil playing the violin, it seems to be based on him. He was tall and real skinny and pointed, and his eyes were meant to be on fire. Yeah, and he had a tail. And and people say that even when he broke strings, it sounded like he was still hitting every note, and it was perfect. Um, And he used to exit buildings by jumping through the roof. Yeah, going, ah, you'll never catch me. I'm the mechanical devil. <laughs> I, I, I knew we shouldn't have put up views that the devil would spring heel jack. Yeah. And so when he was on his deathbed, they offered him the last rites, and he was like, no. <laughs> so I think that, the devil. Somebody that, that, that might have kind of like, like, like no. fed the whole thing. But, um, oh, he's probably uh, like, <laughs> telling you I'm Hindu. I think it's one of the kind of it's like, yes, the devil. <laughs> no, like, I believe in Shiva, the, god, the goddess <laughs> of war. Like, yeah, the devil. <laughs> yeah. No. That would be is she for the goddess of war? Mm. Uh, Kali, no, oh no, Kali is destruction. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that'd be Kali. Kali. Yeah. Oh, Kali, ma. Om <laughs> <laughs> nom shivaya. That didn't sound creepy at all. Mm. <laughs> no, Indiana Jones. Wait, wait, wait. Do you not, have you not, did you not get that? No, she's never seen Indiana Jones. <gasps> You've what? never seen Indiana Jones. Get out. No. Get entirely no. out. <laughs> Obviously, the podcast. Oh my god. Here, mm. let, let's see if I can really talk about Have you seen Die Hard? Yes. Oh, okay. oh, phew. Okay, mm. that's all right. By the skin of your teeth, you can stay in. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems uh, to be there's co- a lot of movies I haven't seen. <laughs> but you have, you honestly, you have to watch the Indiana Jones. Then, so have you? Seen, have you not seen any of the Indiana and Jones? Mandy. No, see, I don't think I've seen any of them actually. Oh my god! Martyrs. That's Mark. You have to sit down no, and watch Martyrs. No, no, and no, no. Movie. Start easy. But look, Start easy. It's not a movie podcast. I know, but um, mm. oh my god, though. Uh, but um, as well, another guy, the another blues musician as well, that seemed to have solely sold to the devil. Um, he called himself the devil's son-in-law. Fair enough. <laughs> not like really? the devil's son. He's like, son-in-law. yeah, I'm the devil's son-in-law. It's like Dwight in the so office. So was he kind, like, kind like, of calling the his... devil, the manager, what the was he assistant manager? Then? I know, and his mother-in-law. It was probably hey, well, see, you're an insult towards him. Um, mm. Yeah, you're assuming that he he got married to a woman. 
Like, I apologize. He could, like, That's true. Like, I'm assuming like, he's the son in law, and he got married to Damien, the devil's oh, yeah. son. That would make mm. sense. So, true. You know, mm. Just like South Park taught us, the devil is gay, and yes. also is the son. Mm. But, like, you but don't if, really if just... the devil is gay, well, maybe he adopted a son. Yeah. Well, He's the devil, he can do whatever he wants. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, despite all that... I delving quite deep into this. <laughs> yes, thinking too hard. One thing, when I went yeah. off researching this, I, I found out that one thing I was really surprised about was that apparently Bob Dylan is kind of like, not a lot of people would say like, oh, Bob Dylan's holy soul, but Bob yes. Dylan kind of hinted at himself in an interview. Um, uh, geez, ages ago, yeah, uh, in 2009... Also- Bob Dylan was a bit a, like a, a bit bit of a fucking well still is a bit of a weirdo in the sense that like you you wouldn't be surprised if he was like also my mother was a praying mantis. <laughs> no, but not not like the, yes. this like Bob Dylan was always like a folk man and a man of the people and all that. And in two thousand nine interview they went, uh, why do you still do it? Why are you still uh, here? Um he says it goes back to that destiny thing. I made a bargain with a long time ago and I'm holding up my end. The interviewer was what was the bargain to get where I am now? Shall I ask whom you made the bargain with? With the chief commander on this earth uh, on this earth and the world we can't see. But in, like honestly, like if people, if you know Bob Dylan, that's like very weird thing for Bob Dylan. But that could be a very spiritual thing. Maybe you meant God. But he's not spiritual at all. Uh, but it's like he. I'm not saying he sold his soul to the devil, but he's kind of pretty much saying he did. Um, I'm not saying he did, but he did. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean the thing is as well like there's a lot of people that people suspect Jay-Z is one as well apparently I didn't know this at all but Jay-Z? like a lot of, yeah people are saying that like yeah, he sold he, he sold he's the, the devil's son-in-law you know yeah. Beyonce is us devil's yeah, 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 she is devil's <laughs> he's the devil's uh, second cousin twice removed <laughs> yes the advocate um, but like I mean the whole thing with it is because people are saying it because I've seen him wearing uh, t-shirts with do what thou wilt which is a Crowley thing the but like I mean law. you could get into like we'll probably do another stage mm about kind of like musicians who are kind of like influenced by the occult more so than that could be a very so very broad be range big, yeah. like the occult has yeah. massive to like mm-hmm. Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin they were like I, I saw his house up in uh, Scotland uh, oh, up by Loch Ness Alistair Crowley's old it was yeah. Al- Alistair Crowley's old house which he ended up buying and moving into and moved out very very quickly yeah he's like fuck this um, shit but um, like there's a lot of people that are, are like linked to with that but surprisingly there is not many people that were people are like oh they sold or sold to be like virtuosos it seems when you mm. do look it up it's Robert Johnson seems to be the main the man, main the main man. Mm. Mm. so after looking at the documentary would you go off listen to blues music or? I thought you were going to say well, so after looking at the documentary would you sell your soul to the devil <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, would you sell your soul for some Kimberly McAdams no on mm. both <laughs> questions mm. there for me um, I thought it was interesting <laughs> Um, I definitely do a bit of research into it. Would I go off and listen to the music? Probably not. Oh my God. A bit different now. I, I think mm. I would. Um, I definitely think the change, um, or kind of listening to just a little bit of the blues music there and knowing a bit more about it, has given me a little bit more of an appreciation than I would have had before. Um, mm. Would I say it's going to be my favorite music of all time, or it's going to be something I'm going to listen to a lot? No, but is it something that I'm probably going to throw on from time to time or look into a bit more to see? A bit more about and give it more kind of another chance or even a first chance. Yeah, definitely that for me. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. If you if you go off listen to something like the Delta Blues is kind of like the the, the start of it all. Really, kind of like where it starts getting a bit heavy. Mm. Was it Muddy Waters? Muddy Waters probably be seen as the granddaddy. The biggest. Yeah. yeah. Is it Muddy Waters? That like Kurt Cobain, My Girl. Yeah. Yeah. It would be. Yeah. Muddy yeah. Waters is the one that kind of normally gets like the kind of um, kind of credit for rock and roll and whatnot kind of the precursor to it isn't it mm. yeah and whereas like, I mean, he's supposed to take in, he was supposed to take like a lot of his um, style and kind of association from people like Robert Johnson mm, yeah Robert Johnson I think definitely brought the percussiveness into it and kind of like that heaviness and the, the kind of rock and roll thing into it but like I mean any rock band that's out there every bit of music is influenced by the blues kind of like you know with the three bar kind of like rhythm to it as well and the minor chords um, whereas before that you, you if you're playing musical instruments you, you you see the big difference um kind of between say playing kind of like happy music and kind of blues music uh but between minor and major um things but yeah muddy waters i think is definitely the, the biggest 
Oh, Lead Belly. That's who it is. I have his album there. Laura just pulled out the vinyl there. Yeah, it was Lead Belly who did My Girl. Um, he'd be another one to go off on this. I'd, like, there's so many of these guys, and Lead it's Belly. craziness. Like, with a lot of these chaps, they just went in and they, they just recorded albums um, just mm. fucking in, like, a day or two days, and then the, the rec- they got fuck all the money for it, and mm. the records were well, sold. that's what you did. You went down to the, the local radio station, basically, um, mm. because that was your only option. You just went in, you recorded it, if you were lucky, and you, you didn't get any money because they were basically doing it just to put out on air. And if you were lucky, you got a pressing of your records to bring around with you mm. as a sub-promotional tool, and that was about it, really. Yeah. Well, you can see, like, from the documentary, they do go into that even, like, even... In its time, like uh, there were like musicians and whatnot that were kind of even when he was around went, oh yeah, Robert Johnson is this and that. But even after his death, for a long time, there was no real Thanks notoriety so. because um, there just it, like there wasn't a lot of um, records pressed and whatnot. It was only when people started like almost dumpster diving or the equivalent of dumpster diving for records that they started unearthing these and then reprints started I, getting made and whatnot. They call it. Crete diving is actually what they call it. Yeah. Ah. Well, you know, mm. I, I was, I was ever big into digging out vinyl, so I, I was just running off the top of my head. But Crete diving, so it wasn't too far off the mark. Oh, you weren't too far. Hmm. 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 Watch it. Mm. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Like, I, I definitely recommend that documentary. It it, can, it does a great, um, just go, go into great detail about blues, but also about a really interesting artist. Um, It'll do much, like, it'll do better justice to the artist than we could without just pretty much ripping it off um but yeah it's a, it was a great documentary um good hour and a bit of time but yeah pretty good about an hour and a half roughly but it was really good definitely captivating hmm. so there you go so don't sell your soul kids because you might get <laughs> famous for it <laughs> <laughs> and then Who'd die super young <laughs> mm-hmm. but yes on to the next bit great Odin's raven Okay, so we're back with another artist highlight or artist recommendation. I, I, I we haven't really thought of a name to call this this kind of section yet. So yeah, it's a song blurb. Song blurb. <laughs> we'll figure we'll figure something out. But yeah, so Jen, you have another uh, artist recommendation for us this week. Yes, I do. Um, this is an artist. Her name is Lights. Um, she is from. Canada. Um, I seem to be liking kind of Canadian uh, singers and bands um, of recent, but to be honest, this is a, a artist that I haven't listened to in a little while, but that I followed for quite a long time. And I went to see her live, I would say about nine years ago okay. in the Academy, which is a small uh, venue, well, small enough venue, small enough venue in, in Dublin, Dublin, but it's a great venue to go see uh, any artist. Like I've seen, I saw um, Sonata Artica there, and I also saw Hailstorm there, and okay. they were great shows as well. But that's for another day. <laughs> so um, I didn't really know what to expect when I was going up. I uh, accompanied my um, best friend Ned, and um, he was like, "Oh, I'm going to see this Canadian singer, um, Lights, and she's kind of pop. Uh, would you like to come?" And I was like. I was just kind of out of hospital recently and I was recovering from a, a bit of an injury. And I was like, yeah, I'd love to just kind of get out for the day. Well, I wasn't really expecting to enjoy it quite as much as I did, but there was one song that like really resonated with me and it was called Siberia. Um, and if anyone is kind of into kind of pop and upbeat kind of music, I definitely check her out. Um, the album Lights is is the name of, of this album where Siberia is on. It's a second album by um, Lights. Her uh, born name is Valerie Ann Pux Lechner. I'm I, I probably mispronouncing that, but she is famously known as Lights. Um, she's a singer, so, uh, songwriter. She's an author and an illustrator. Um, she's only 33 years old, but she has been touring for quite a long time like we're talking over 10 years and um, she's been active actually since 2006 okay. so she's been going now since she was quite young um you know since she was I think about 20 I, I'm probably not 100% right with the the um dates there but um I only saw her once it was like a two-hour gig there was probably like, I, I don't know how many people the academy do can actually fit but 
It's only a couple of hundred at most. A hundred maybe, yeah. There, it was full, I'll, I'll put it that way, but it, it was a nice crowd because everyone was close enough to her to really experience it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great place because it's like curved slightly around and it also, even if you're in the far back of it, 